So what we're going to do here is a uh, step up through the Photoshop layers to show you how I worked up this image, one of my boxing images. And it came from this original here. Um, what attracted me to it, it's about three years ago this now, what attracted me to it is as much as the fact that obviously this guy's landing a punch, which is quite a rare thing to capture, but it's the look on these trainers around the side. I think they really add drama to the situation and also the ropes uh, drag your eye in into the perfect place. I'm not too sure that I'd in, in, you know, if I had my way, the ref wouldn't be there at all, I don't think, but I can't do anything about that. He's far too big an object to begin to try and take out. So uh, the ref's gonna stay, and eventually, as I say, we're going to end up with this image. So let's go to the Photoshop layer stack then, and go to the bottom, and if I alt click on the bottom bottom there, there we go. There's the original. So the first thing to say to you is um, anybody who's seen my workups before will know that this is the TK Action Panel, short for Tony Kuiper, and it's a plug-in. And you'll I use it a lot um, just for one button presses. It's only about 20 quid to buy. Um, and so I just don't want people to look at it and wonder where on earth all these extra buttons have come from. So the first thing to say then is that this image is shot in very, very low light conditions. And so the ISO for this particular image, ISO, was up at 5000, which makes it very, very noisy. And if we zoom in here, you'll just see the extent of the noise. Look, look at the extent of the noise in the background here. So uh, the first thing we do is we run it through Topaz Denoise AI. And if you watch this area up here, it'll be really clear what it does. Can you see it's made a really, really good job. So if I zoom in again and switch it off and then switch it on. There you go. You can see that's done a super job. Um, I used to use all the time uh, the Nick Collection one, um, Nick Define, I think it's called. Uh, and that's fine, and I'd use that for years. And certainly, it's still my go-to noise reduction for images up to ISO of about a 1,000, something like that. But I, I, I downloaded the program, the, the trial version of Denoise AI, Topaz Denoise AI. It's not a cheap program. It's about $150, I think. Um, so I was quite, you know, I, was, I needed to be sure it was worth it. So I downloaded it and tried it on one of these boxing images and several images. And I found that for high ISO images, uh, 5000 um, region, which boxing images often are, it was definitely better than the Nick software that I was using, the Nick Define. So indeed, I went ahead and bought it. But I would say if your images are not high ISO, you know, up to say a thousand, and you've already got the nick. I didn't see any difference at all, as I say, up to about a thousand fifteen hundred ISO. Right, the first thing then we're going to do, we look at the image. I'm looking now at the image, I've, I've got the noise out of it to a, a sub, uh, satisfactory level, and now we want to start tidying it up because backgrounds distract the eye. Uh, they might, you might say, oh, well, that was what it was like on the day, but they distract the eye so that you know you can see this. It's actually at a eye socket, Sheffield eye socket, where the Steelers play, and so that's a, that's a high socket mask there on the wall, and there's some green sign here. Look, and there's a guy here with a uh, mobile phone and all of these things distract the eye of the viewer from where we want them to look because where we want them to look let's not forget going back to the finished version we just want the main protagonists we want the boxers in this case the ref I can't do anything about so he's got to be there but then it's these people these these corner men who add the drama to the situation so we need to start getting rid of things and if I go down, I start tidying up. So if you look, if I switch this layer on, you'll see things disappear. Look up here, up here, um, and down there. So there we go. And I've grouped it together. I will have done it on a number of layers. Look, if I all I've done there is group them together in a folder. If I open that up, you can see, oh, there's four, five, six, seven layers. But they're, they're all doing the same thing. They'll all be using the clone stamp tool. 
um, or the spot spot removal tool the one over here I use the spot healing brush a lot I use the healing brush a lot and I also use the clone stamp a lot and I do it on separate layers so that if I make a mistake it's easy to go to go back so there it is on off that's took out some of the distractions right now a key element of my images is always uh, to make the subject stand out and the background to recede and the principal reason I would principal way I do that is by using uh, a brightness contrast adjustment layer to darken the background and sometimes brighten the foreground so what I've done here is as you can see I've done a brightness contrast adjustment layer and taken the brightness of the background right down if we look at this look I've really reduced the brightness when you look at what I've done I've increased the contrast because Increasing contrast also reduces brightness. So the two work in opposite, if you like. If, if I put the contrast back this way, uh, I just remember what it's at, 49. You can see, look, can you see it brightening up? Because effectively, what contrast is doing is um, altering, the program's altering the difference between the brightest and darkest parts of the image. It's making the dark parts darker and the bright parts brighter. So more contrast means that the dark bits, which is what we're trying to darken, will go even darker. So you can see a lot, a lot of adjustment there. Minus 40, minus 89 for brightness, plus 49. And you can see the effect it has. And the way I've made it uh, work just on the background and not on the boxes is by making a mask. And so I will have put a, made a selection of the boxes and the ropes and these corner men. And I'll invariably have done it to start with using the quick selection tool, which is absolutely brilliant in the latest version of Photoshop. Using the quick selection tool, I'll have dropped a selection um, around the uh, boxes and the ropes, and then I'll have tidied it up, um, taken my time, and got a good selection of the things that I want to be able to keep bright and the other things I want to darken. And then using that mask, that's exactly what I can do, look. And then what I do is I want to darken uh, the foreground because on this case, it's actually the things that I want you to look at are, in my opinion, still a bit are a bit bright. Often it's the other way around, actually. I need to brighten them. But in this case, I'm darkening them. So there you go. You can see that's the original. I've put that same mask, uh, mask on again. And by uh, masking it, uh, white, white reveals black conceals in a mask so everything that's white in the mask is going to feel the effect everything that's dark isn't and by doing that look i can darken the foreground okay moving up um there'll be sometimes there's no particular order to this okay i have a basic workflow but i'll do things as i look at the image i'll think that ah, needs a bit of that and then i'll do it so at this point, I've obviously thought the whole the whole image is still too bright for my eye. And so just uh, by using a brightness contrast adjustment layer, and if we go here, how much have I done? Not a lot, look, minus 14, a little bit more contrast. So that's just my eye saying no, it's still the whole image is still too bright, darken it down. Right, now we're going to start and work on the boxes and I make a selection around the boxes and again that'll be using the quick select tool and let me um, show you I need to create a um, well I'll tell you what I'll go down to the original here and make a selection on here and I, I just do it like this so I go across here to the quick select tool and then I will say select subject and see what Photoshop does and there you go you can see it's not done a bad job straight from the get-go now in this particular mass that we're talking about i just wanted it of the boxes so what i would do is i would increase my mask size my brush size here and by pressing alt on my keyboard the plus sign becomes a negative sign and that will subtract things from the selection so there we go so straight away we have got rid of the ref but it's missed a bit look on his foot so I've let go of the alt key and it's gone back to a plus again and you can see and then it's selected a bit here that's wrong press the alt key goes back to a negative and it's taken a bit out of his foot so now the 
press in there you get the picture a little bit you know you're gonna to have to mess about you're going to, it's gonna take you maybe 10 minutes to get a good selection of this missed his head completely look I'm gonna take you 10 minutes to get a good selection of this but that's exactly how I do it so we'll deselect that control D and we'll go back to where we were in the uh, procedure so what I've done there is I've made a mask by using that selection and this mask look is just of the boxes Okay. And I call it Master Mask because I'll probably use it over and over again. Right, first thing I'm going to do is darken the, the, uh, this left-hand boxer. Uh, sorry, the right-hand boxer. He's too bright. Look, he's brighter than the left one. So watch him, watch the skin tones here, and he goes darker. Look. In fact, they've, all, they've both got been made a little bit darker, but he's got more of the effect on him. And the reason you can see that is because, can you see, I've slightly greyed out using a black brush on the mask, the, uh, the, the left-hand boxer. Right, moving up. Tidy up there. So, if I switch it on and off, look down here. Look at all these sort of bright bits. If I switch it off, uh, can you see lots of bright bits, lots of little flashes and I switch it on, look down here particularly this sort of area, I switch it on and they've gone. And again, that, if I opened up that folder, there's lots and lots of layers, you see, and I just, I do it on separate layers and then tidy it all up by creating a folder out of them. So that's tidying up. Right, I want a bit of drama, so we're going to add some spray. Um, it really helps if spray erupts from the person being hit. Uh, if he doesn't get, if he gets hit early in a round, that happens naturally. It's water erupting. They're, they're doused down with water uh, from a sponge in between rounds. If they hit early on, spray flies off. It's not sweat, it's water. But this guy was hit late on in the round, so there was no spray. Well, I'm not going to let that stop me. I'll go to one of my stock images uh, where I've got spray, and I'll, I'll copy it across and add it to our image. And if you look, I will have changed the blending mode here. So I've added the spray, masked it out, and changed the blending mode to luminosity blending mode because that then just uh, only shows you the bright bits. And of course, the spray is brighter than the background. So it's only going to, uh, that luminosity blending mode shows you uh, just the bits I want you to see. I can't remember, I'm not going to pretend to you, I'm clever enough to remember what the various blending modes uh, do uh, down here all these different blending modes so i'll tell you what i do i just go through them one at a time so if i go to normal so if you look up here at the spray sometimes there's very little difference i can't actually see a lot of difference there let me do something there if i go to hard light look it's gone all together so i usually just actually just go down them uh, and watch what happens can you see as i'm running down it look at the spray and you'll see different effects and I just get to one where I think yeah that's all right that's doing its job I, I don't really know the maths of how it's doing it um, I don't really care to be honest with you um, I'm just going to use it so as I remember it was luminosity wasn't it there we go luminosity I've obviously just worked down it and decided that's the best blending mode right now we're going to turn it to black and white very very recently I've started using a new black and white conversion tool I did all my black and white conversion and still, indeed I still do my main way of doing a black and white conversion if I switch this off is in Photoshop just using the uh, a black and white um, panel a, a black and white layer adjustment layer and you can see with this adjustment layer I've just called it up from the TK action panel I can alter the tones of the various colors in the image that so that's all the things blue are going darker blue and all going light and blah 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 anyway that's how I uh, do it 90% of the time um, but I'm going to get rid of that now um, but just recently I bought myself a plug-in from the infinite tools collection um, I use one or two of these I use the infinite color panel and the infinite um, blending panel that this this they've got infinite texture uh, infinite visualizer uh, infinite radiance and infinite unify and they had one called infinite black and white and because I've been impressed with the others I thought I'll give it a go um, and I did and it actually I'm very impressed with it 
Um, it's got lots going on. If I open up the layer, the folder look, there's an awful lot going on here and I don't pretend to understand how it's doing it. Um, but what it does do is it does a lovely, um, a lovely soft black and white conversion in my opinion. Um, but I've only just started using it, uh, but it certainly impressed me enough to buy it. So there we go, I've used the infinite uh, black and white panel to convert it to mono. All my boxing images are mono. I, I don't think I've actually worked up a competition image in colour for boxing. And the main reason for that is it, it furthermore helps hide the noise, but also I think it just suits the gritty nature of this sport. Right, we're getting on quite well now. So a brightness contrast adjustment layer again, if I switch it on and off. Can you see it's the ropes? So all the while I'm looking at the image, I'm sort of sitting back um, and I tend to screw my eyes up. So I'm just looking through a little slit of my eye and I look for the things that are really bright. And unless they are a really part, important part of the story, they shouldn't be bright because your eye, you are psychologically drawn to look at the brightest things. It's just the way our brain works. So if the things I want you to look at are bright, the corner men, the boxers and so on, that's good. But if the, if the ancillary things are bright, that's not good because you're going to end up looking at those. And here, look, you can see, look at this post and look at these ropes. I've reduced the brightness of them. So there we go. Now, dodging and burning. I use dodging and burning extensively. Look at the muscles on the back of the boxer here and on his arm. And hopefully you should see some difference. Can you see? It's quite subtle. Um, look, look on his back. Look up around the face up here. It's quite subtle, but it... It adds drama. I dodge and burn on a 50% um, a grey layer. And if I open it up, look again. Can you see? There's, there's three layers. And they're all doing the same thing. I just do a little bit on one layer. And when I'm happy I've done that little bit, I'll move up and I create another dodge and burn layer and do a little bit more and another one and do a little bit more. And that's why when people look at my Photoshop layer stat and they see like 50, 60 layers, they think I must have been you know, doing all sorts of really clever things. I'm not. I'm really, really not. I'm probably only doing the same thing 10 or 12 times. That's why I end up with so many layers. Why do I do that? So that I can go back and I can switch these layers off without losing loads of work. I'm only losing a little bit of work. Now, we'll close that up again, switch it on and off. And I think mainly, I don't know what the resolution is going to be like on your monitor, but mainly look at the boxes back here. And hopefully you can see that it's emphasized the muscle tone. And then I'm going to do the same on the ref. Because although you can't see his face, I quite like these creases in his, in his shirt and what have you. So look carefully over here at the creases in his shirt. And hopefully, can you see a little bit of difference there? And it's all kind of adding a bit of drama. It's making a, a 3D effect is what I'm trying to do. Right, brightness, contrast, heel. So again, remember that trick that I do. I was taught it by a guy called Neil Humphreys. Screw your eyes up. If anything's really bright, it shouldn't be. Um, and in this case, look, look at the boxer's heel down here. Um, and look, I've made it go dark. And this might have actually been feedback from... Um, my editor, I've got a, a lady um, called Molly Chell, whose attention to detail is absolutely staggering. And I send her all my competition images when I think I've got to the point I'm happy with them. And I'll send them to her and she'll come back and put circles around them, things that I've missed. And her job is just to try and look for all those little things. So this might be one of hers that she's spotted. Um, but as you see, look, look at the heels down here. Look at this area. And I've darkened it because it was too bright. It would, the danger it would draw your eye. Now, this is an adjustment layer I use a lot. It's called a clarity adjustment layer. Um, I call it up from the TK Action panel here. Um, here, clarity. But you don't need the TK Action panel to do it. You could get it from Camera Raw. Clarity adjustment layer. And I don't know whether it will be too subtle for you to see at the resolution. Um, let me just see, we'll tell you where to look. So down here, you, what it does is, it again, is adjusting micro contrast. Um, and it really starts to make things 
pop a little bit. But you can see it's subtle. And you can see I've actually dialed it down. It's at 82% opacity, this layer. Um, keep things subtle. Um, I'm an image maker. I doctor my images massively to create the, or I doctor my raw photographs massively to create the final image I want, to tell the story I want. But I've got to do it subtly. If I do it too heavy handed, you will spot it. Now look, when you look at my images now, you know what I've done, so you probably will spot it. But the question is, would you have spotted it before? Keep everything subtle, really subtle. Another tidy up layer, what have we done here? Uh, look down here, this area here. Can you see these little white flecks here? Well, I've decided they don't really add anything to the story, and so I've got rid of them. And that will be with the clone stamp tool or, or um, with the spot healing brush. Use the spot healing brush a lot. A vignette. A vignette darkens the outside areas of the picture, uh, so it draws your eye into the centre. So there's the vignette off, and look here, look, look down in the corners. You're not spotted up here, of course, because it's dark already, but just look in the corners, and you can see it drags the corners down in brightness, pushing your eye in again. So I would say my principal method of trying to get the viewer to look where I want them to look is concentrating the contrast, okay? Making the thing I want the viewer to look at bright and everything else darker. But as you can see, I do it in stages, gradually building it up, building it up. A bit more dodging and burning. Not even sure we'll see where it is. Yes, we can see where it is. I've put a vignette on, but I've still decided that this is not this is too bright. So I've done it this time with a dodge and burn layer and darken, darken down the bits I want. Now, uh, a curves layer, I do this a lot as well. And can you see, just look at the overall brightness of the picture. So what I've done is, there it's off, the curves layer is off, and I've put a curves adjustment layer on and made it go brighter. Now, what I will have done here, I know for a fact, if I switch it off and I call in a curves adjustment layer, this is a, a wonderful little trick I learned. Um, so I go across TK action panel again, and there's the curves adjustment layer, and it brings one in automatically. Right, I don't know if you know this, I certainly didn't. If you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and press Auto, what Photoshop does is give you a variety of different things, well, four things for you to try. And again, I'm not pretending to you for one minute that I understand the science of what all these things are doing. I don't care. I just click on them and see if I like it. So it's given me four alternatives by pressing that Alt Auto. Enhance monochromatic contrast. I look at that and I go, yeah, that's okay. Enhance per channel contrast. It's going to have very little effect because that's dealing with the color channels. So I doubt there's much going on there. Find dark and light colors. Can't see any difference there. Enhance brightness contrast. See a big difference there. So I, I will just decide which one uh, I think suits the image best. I, I can't remember which one I've used in the actual example. But enhance monochromatic contrast look quite good. And I'll go, OK. And then what I might have done then is dial it down. Let's see what I've done. Because let's um, uh, get rid of that temporary layer there and let's go back to the curves layer and the first thing let's have a look what opacity so can you see whatever I've chose to do um, I have if I open it up I've used the auto it looks as if actually I've used the uh, per channel contrast even though I said that that wouldn't have any effect but whatever I've done I've decided to dial it down by 50% okay moving up another tidy up layer uh, where are we? Uh, yep, look down here. Look, another little white flash. Tidy up, gone. Okay, a bit more dodging and burning. Because can you see? There's no, there's no, um, there's no uh, absolutely linear order to what I'm doing. I'm just working my way up, and I keep looking at the image and thinking, yeah, a little bit more contrast there. It's all about contrast, though. Getting rid of distraction by cloning things out. Um, and then using contrast, darkening things and brightening things. Right, um, look down here at this guy's elbow. Um, this is the elbow of the trainer. 
And the problem is it interferes with the foot of the fighter. And uh, I don't like that, so I'm going to become a surgeon. I'm going to surgically remove it. Because you might go, well, it looks weird now. Well, it only looks weird now because you knew it should be there in the first place. If you'd never known it was there, you wouldn't actually uh, think there was anything strange. You would just think he's leaning over a little bit more. So I've removed the elbow so the foot stands out because I don't. I want the fighter to be defined. Uh, harm, arm highlight. This is this. Can you see this area here? And this is the reflection. This is the bright lights. And there's hardly any detail in there. If we zoom in, I bet there's hardly any detail in that area. Look, because it's a blown highlight. Basically, you get a lot of this in boxing. Um, what if I if I click it on? And how have I done that? I've used the. I know what I'll have used. I will have used the healing brush tool. And if we open it up, you can see. Look, it's it's a layer which is grouped together in a folder um, and each of these layers tidy up tidy up i'll have used um, the uh, healing brush tool and i've picked up a bit of skin from somewhere else and brought it in and paint you see the healing brush tool is a really delicate clone stamp tool i always think of it it does the same thing you pick something up from somewhere and clone it in but it's much more subtle about it now what i'd say is at uh, this sort of uh, magnification it, it looks pretty ropey but we have to remember the whole skin tones are ropey anyway because the light's so low um, and the image is so noisy that none of these images would stand massive close scrutiny really close up but that's not what it's about is it it's not about massive close scrutiny we're not trying to do a portrait here we're trying to dram portray a dramatic situation tidy up shorts don't know what i've done can't even see it but oh, i can it's down here look can you see something here so um tidy up shorts there we go tidy up. oh it looks like a stray hair remove man this is this man back here i decided he was too bright or i think actually it was when i sent it to marley's she said it was too bright uh tidy up not sure oh yeah this is these bright areas here um constantly constantly trying to take things out that might distract your eye bit more tidying up that's down here look um, there we go and right up to the glove this is definitely something Marley's fed back to me I'd not noticed this this, this is actually a logo on his glove um, and but it actually it all blends into the guy's face so what I've done look is using the clone stamp tool and the healing brush and a variety of other techniques if we open it up there's quite a lot going on actually look look how many uh, layers there are just to um, t uh, tidy up that glove but I, I repeat one more time the fact there's loads of layers don't mean there's lots of clever stuff going on it just means I do a little bit on each layer in case I want to go back face shine um, can't it's up here look just there um, I'm a bit too bright his face is so I've dulled it down another tidy up we're getting really down to the small bits down here look down here um, sometimes it becomes hard for you, for me to spot what I've done. Ropes. Right, I noticed uh, um, that actually, well, I didn't notice it. This is one Molly's notice. These bit of ropes here, look, it's in the dark. But I've worked on the image so long, I've missed it. I've missed it altogether. But when you, as the casual, casual viewer looks, or first-time viewer, looks like some rope's missing. So what I've done, I've repaired it. Just carried it, bought a bit of rope in and repaired it. And then the final thing tidy up not even sure where it is so there we go that's the work up uh, right from the bottom all the way up what I would do then at this stage is I would flatten the image here and then I would sharpen it I use the sharpening tool in the TK action panel um, most of my competition images are 1600 horizontal by 1200 vertical so I set it up like that I just press that there we go and it's sharpened it and if i uh, this best sharpening tool i have ever used i use nothing else switch it off switch it on switch it off switch it on and then i've got a little quick key on my keyboard to flatten all this again and put a gray border around it i'm just going to press it now it's f9 on my keyboard it will oh it won't and i know why it's because i'm actually the reason it won't is because i'm using that key to uh, record it's part of the Camtasia I'm using to uh, record this video but 
if it was not recording then it would uh, flatten it and put a gray border around it which is that gray border you can see there i put a little gray border around it's only one pixel wide um but i put one around all my images particularly black images and i'll tell you why because it's going to be projected in front of the judges with a black background everything behind is filled in with black if i don't put this black with white border around the judge doesn't actually know where my image starts and stops this black would merge into the black of the projector but actually i use it for all my images i think it just finishes them off nicely so there we go um, a really quick work up the layer stack for this image and uh, i'm not i've not actually told you any detail about any how you do any of the layers I could do that separately if, if someone wanted me to do that but I'm more interested or I think it would be more useful um, for most people just to see the workflow working up because it's that logical repeatable workflow that for my money is the most important thing get yourself a workflow look at the image look at this basic image this is the way I do it I look at that image and I just I spend probably five minutes thinking what I need to do what have I got to do to make this tell the story I want to tell so your eye looks where I want you to look what's important what's not important I've decided these corner men are important obviously the boxes are important and you've seen how then working my way up uh, we go from that to this there we go hope that's been useful thanks